Hello and welcome back into Nate's Breaks and Unboxings. Today we are doing something new for my channel. I know other pe people do these sorts of things, but this is the first for me. We are doing a bit of a Flashback Friday. In fact, we are doing a Fleer Flare Flashback Friday. Try saying that five times fast. This is one of those sets. When I think back to when I started out collecting back in the late 80s, early 90s, Especially, obviously, this is the early 90s because 93 Premier Edition. Um, this was one of those sets that I really didn't buy much of. It was too expensive for my poor 13-year-old self. Um, I think I maybe bought two or three packs of this the entire, you know, in the entire run. Uh, but this was one of those sets that was introduced by Fleer. This is the first year of it. And it was supposedly, or they introduced it as their, like, ultra-high quality uh, product. Um they had already had their FLIR base. Then in 91, they introduced FLIR Ultra. I don't really count the 91 set because it was terrible. Until 92 FLIR Ultra is when they really took it to the next level with the gold embossed print and that sort of thing. And then in 93, they introduced FLIR Flare. And so I was on eBay. As you do, you look at old stuff. You think of your youth. And I came across a bunch of these. And I found one for a price that I liked. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get this and I'm going to open this on my channel. Now, there's not a ton, there's really no rookies of note in this set. It was 93, so there were possibilities, but honestly, probably the biggest name rookie in this set is JT Snow. So <laughs> looking back, he was a pretty big name at the time, but not so much now. There's plenty of Hall of Famers and all time, you know, greats in this set, though, from, you know, the late, late 80s, early 90s. And so. Those are fun to get, no matter what. Um, and the design on these things is just beautiful. Um, this In this box, we get, I believe it's 24 packs in a box, and there's 10 cards per pack, if I'm not mistaken. And that was kind of a big deal, too, because back in those days in the junk wax area, you, get, you typically got 36 packs in a box, and anywhere from 12 to 16 cards in a pack. Uh, so this was definitely high-end. Now, like, I, I got it on eBay, so I'm hoping that everything's in here. It looks pretty solid. You got the FLIR shrink wrapping. Now, of course, I suppose there's people out there that could fake that. Um, I didn't buy it from a dealer, you know, that had um, authenticated it or anything. But you know what? For the price I got it for, I we're going to have some fun just opening this box of FLIR Flare. So let's go ahead and get into it. The packaging on this was also something of note. It was kind of a cool first time thing. Um, so yeah, before we get into this, if you like what you're seeing on my channel, um, go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave me comment down below. I would love to hear from you. You know, if this was something that you purchased as a kid or remember as a kid, um, would love to hear your thoughts. And again, nothing super duper high end or high value valuable in here. This was considered a high-end product. There's nothing, but it's, if nothing else, it's just going to be a little, little bit of fun to open up this great, fun, classic product. Um, so we'll just go ahead and set that up like that. And he, this is each pack. Each pack is shrink-wrapped, so I need to get some scissors out. I had forgotten that detail. And so it almost looks like a um, cigarette, a box of cigarettes or playing cards, that sort of deal. And so you've got to take off several layers of shrink wrap. So this video is going to be a likely on the longer side of things. Oh my goodness. And then it's wrapped again. So yes, there's 300 cards in the set. Um, 20 different, there's only one subset in here. It's called wave of the future. Um, it's about one for every four packs. So we should have about six in here. Um, so yeah, this is what the, the, the packs look like. I remember when I bought them, I would, I just put the cards back in the pack and kept the pack because the box was so kind of nice. So we've, this is going to be a little bit longer of an opening. We're going to set the open boxes there because we're going to have to open these. I'm hoping that because this is such an old set and the cards have that are glossy that they haven't stuck together too badly. Oh my. There we go. Um, and like I said, this is just full of classic 80s, 90s players. 
Look at this, David Wells when he had hair. And look at the photography on these. These are just beautiful cards. Got the flare up there, David Wells. John Wetland. Darren Lewis. Brett Barbary. The great Cecil Fielder. Ellis Burks. Chili Davis. Dennis Martinez. Jody Reed. And Pete Harnish. So there you go. That's kind of what you're going to get. And if you look at these cards, they're quite thick for, um, for the day. I think these may have been some of the thicker cards on the market. So let's get to our next pack. I'm going to just work my way down, make sure we get six cards per stack. And I need uh, some sharper scissors, apparently. Um, yeah, if you if you remember back to the day and have any fond memories of your Fleer Flare cars, go ahead and leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Oh, man. <laughs> this is going to take forever. All right. I think I'm going to do some rearranging. I'm going to take the empty packs off screen. I'm going to move the box over here because this is going to take a while. <laughs> I did not take this into consideration. So I'm going to create some different stacks, maybe stack for some Hall of Famers or some of my favorite players. Um, so here we got a checklist card. Looks like Raphael Palmero. It's got, you know, looks like the gold has kind of faded a little bit. Um, Royce Clayton. See, I just really like the, these, the photography here. And then there's the back. Gives the stats. Derek Bell. We've got Orestes Destrade. Alan Trammell. He's a Hall of Famer. Big Hurt Frank Thomas. It's a nice... And here's that rookie I was telling you about, J.T. Snow, probably the biggest rookie in the set. Ken Hill. Roger McDowell. And Steve Finley. Got a couple Hall of Famers in that box, or pack. This is way back in the day when Tops was not the only name or the only name in the game that had the rights to use the team logos. This is when back when everybody could still do it. Um, I honestly I'm back in the hobby really over the last probably six months. And one thing I haven't looked into is to figure out figure out when that change happened, when Tops got the exclusive rights from Major League Baseball to use the team logos. If you know that answer off the top of your head, go ahead and leave it, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to. It'd be great. Mark Witten. Trevor Hoffman. Al Martin. Anduar Cedinho. Mike Stanley. Greg Vaughn. Mike McFarlane. Randy Myers. Oh, they're all flipped. Randy Myers, a nice Chicago Cub there. Greg Maddox. This card's not in awesome shape. The bottom corner's kind of rough. I don't know if that's from the box or what. Huh. We'll still put, he's a Hall of Famer. And Dave Holland. If I'm missing a Hall of Famer, if I pass up a Hall of Famer too, go ahead and leave me a comment. Just be nice. This is a friendly page. Just a page for a guy who likes baseball cards and for other folks that like baseball cards. This is where I need music playing in the background. <laughs> Ooh, 
was out running some errands this morning and I managed to find some Series 2 blaster boxes of 2020 tops. So I picked up a couple of those, so I'll be doing a video of that down the line here soon. So we got J-Bell, Bob Wickman, Rod Beck. We've got our first insert wave of the future, Bobby Munoz. So you see here it's Bobby, and then you got the big wave in the ocean. That's the back. Not numbered, just tells you it's card 10 of 20. There's 20 of these in the set. So there you go, and there's my cat. We've got Frank Viola, Rick Sutcliffe. He was always a favorite of mine. Actually, both of these guys were great pitchers. Mike Pugliaro. Pigliarulo, excuse me. We've got Brian Harvey, Charlie Hayes, and Joe Oliver. I had a buddy in grade school, junior high, named Charles Hayes. And Charlie Hayes was his favorite ball player. I bet you, I bet you can't guess why. Wonder if I'll find any good old like Will Clark or classic giants for my friends over at Steel Family Cards. That's S T E E L E. They are big San Francisco Giant fans over there. And I know they're it's a father-son duo. Um and I think their other kids may participate occasionally, but um dad is a big Will Clark fan, if I'm remembering correctly. So I wonder if we'll find Will the Thrill in here. We got Paul Molitor. It's a nice Hall of Fame card. Stan Belinda. Eric Hansen. Jeff Facero. Scott Sanderson. Mo Vaughn. This guy, he was something else for a few years. Great, good ball player. We got Cal Ripken. This is probably one of my favorite cards when I was a kid in this set because he was one of my favorite ball players. Doug Drabeck, another great pitcher. Chris Hammond. Joe Girardi, back in his playing days. So it looks like we had six in that sack, stack, and so if we got six to, and there's four stacks, I think we got our full four, 24 packs, which is a good thing. This is a tedious process, so I gotta tell you. This plastic is wearing out, so it's kind of, some of it's disintegrating in my hands. Pleasantly surprised and pleased with how the cards have not stuck together. Robin Ventura, another checklist. This has got, who is that? Well, it's Greg Maddox on the back. Is that Bo Jackson, maybe? I don't know. Tom Pagnazzi. Pedro Martinez. I know. I don't, yeah. Paul Sorrento. Mickey Tendleton. Jack McDowell. Black Jack McDowell. He was a great pitcher back in the 90s. Joe Orsulak. Marquise Grissom. And Ramon Martinez. We got the brothers. All right. Yeah, back in the day, Marquise and Ramon would have been, those cards would have made a young man happy, a young man or woman happy, who was a collector. I really don't know why I'm being so gentle with these boxes, with these packs. I'm not going to keep the boxes, I don't think. One quarter of the way done, and we're 14 minutes in. Oh, boy, this is going to be fun. Tony Gwynn, one of the best hitters ever in the ball, in the game. Carlos Garcia. Kurt Schilling. Another, I don't think he's in the hall... He might, if he's, he might be, he might be going in this year. 
Jim Eisenreich, Chili Davis. I always thought Chili Davis had an awesome name. Uh, Scott Cooper, Mike Devereaux, Pete Harnish. I think that's Benito Santiago. This guy, he was a great player for all the years. He was a, just a steady, solid player throughout his career. Moved around a lot. Um, and David Need. He was another solid pitcher. He had a couple really solid years. Okay, I'm going to do something. We're just going to pull stacks and go a little more quickly. I'm not going to, I'm just going to get the outside packaging off some of these a little bit more quickly. So this video is not an hour and a half long because they quadruple wrapped these cards. I'm thinking back when we paid when back in the day when we paid so much for these cards, if we were paying for the packaging or the cards themselves, because the packaging was pretty intense, as you can see. So let's just go ahead and we have got Jeff King, Mitch Williams, wild thing. Will the thrill. There you go. Friends over at Steel Family Cards. That's all about you. Delino DeShields. His boys, his son's playing now. Andre Dawson, Hall of Famer. Chris Hoyles. Wade Boggs. I gotta tell you, seeing Andre Dawson in that Red Sox uniform is weird to me because I as a Cubs fan, I'm just so used to seeing him as a Cubs. Wade Boggs. Gary Sheffield. He was a favorite of mine at the day. He was kind of a wasn't he was not known to be the nicest guy, but he was a fantastic ball player for a while. Eric Young, Chris Sabo. Oh, the glasses. Check out those glasses. That's probably he was a great ball player, but that's those glasses were his trademark. Okay, I'm getting impatient. We're doing this. <laughs> I had for like I've said, I had forgotten about the wrapping on these cards. Let's keep them on screen. I don't want anybody to think I'm swapping anything out. We have got Robbie Thompson, Daryl Kyle, Andy Van Slyke. This is another a buddy of mine from junior high who's actually no longer with us. Andy Van Slyke was one of his favorite ball players. Howard Johnson, Hojo, Jim DeShale, DeShays, DeShays, forgive me, Daryl Hamilton, George Brett, Hall of Famer. And then we got Sammy Sosa. If you haven't watched, and John Smoltz and John Cruck, um, and put Sammy Sosa there in my Hall of Fame pile, even though he's not in the Hall. Um, if you haven't seen that Sosa McGuire documentary on ESPN, it's fantastic. Talks about the home run chase from that year. Just a great documentary. Mike Jackson, Andy Benes, Steve Cook, another wave of the future card. This time we have Jim Edmonds. He was a really solid player there. We thought he was um, going to go pretty far. Wilson Alvarez, Chad Curtis, Roger Clemens, Rocket. I'm going to put him in this pile. Some of these cards got some scratches on them. All right, we got Mike Piazza, Luis Gonzalez, Gonzo, and Jack Armstrong. I'm going to put Gonzo in that pile, too, just because he's a favorite. <clears throat> All right, 
John Burkett, Bill Swift, Phil Plantier. This is another guy that everybody thought was just going to be a beast. Um, had some solid years, but nothing crazy, crazy, crazy. But yeah, everybody thought he was just going to be a beast. Did not pan out the way everybody thought. Dave Justice, another great ball player. Jim Abbott, the one-handed ball player. He was a very he was a great inspiration to a lot of people. Rick Aguilera, Cal Eldred, Bip Roberts, Dwight Smith, and Deion Sanders. Neon Deion. Pulling some nice cards, some fun cards in here. Don Slott, Dave Winfield, Hall of Famer. Oh, the top of that card's looking... I can't tell if that's bent or if that's just the reflection. So we've got another checklist. Robbie Alomar's on the back. Card number 300 of the set, and I believe the set is a 300-card set. We've got another, or oh, we've got Chuck McElroy, Kevin Appier, Carlos Baerga, phenomenal fielder, shortstop. John Doherty, Danny Jackson, Mike, Mike Stanton, and Mike Lansing. Yeah, Baerga, when um, I believe he and Robbie Alomar were for at least a year or so on the Indians together, and that was quite the infield lineup. I hope by doing this with these packs, I'm not like destroying some highly collectible box. Well, who cares? They're going to go in the trash. recycling because this is cardboard so it's recyclable if you remember if you think back to your favorite days in collecting in the 90s 80s 90s share with me what your favorite set was I'd love to know. Honestly, for considering that whole era is considered the junk, junk wax era, there were some really nice looking products that came out. I still think er, the early first few years of Upper Deck are fantastic. They made bajillions of them, but they're still great looking products. Um, and I've been surprised with everything going on with the explosion of this hobby. Last fall, I uh, found Cardboard Connection, I believe. No. It was a website that sells, um, maybe it was Cardboard Connection, um, old baseball cards. And I managed to find, or I found some 91 Upper Deck. And that was the very first box of baseball cards I ever got, was a box of 91 Upper Deck. I'll never forget, my dad bought it for me. I remember I'm coming home from a work trip and said, I got you something, and he told me to open up his briefcase. And I opened it up, and there sitting on the top was a box of 91 Upper Deck. I could, I was shocked and super excited, because um, my dad was a little bit frugal, and so for him to buy that for me was kind of a big deal. And so, but anyhow, um, on, on that website they had, I'm just going to go through these, and if I see a Hall of Famer, I'll call it out. Um, they had boxes of 91 upper deck for, gosh, what was it? Like 10, 15 bucks. And so I bought a couple of them. Those things are like $40 now because <laughs> of the explosion. Brett Butler, um, he's a, he was a really solid player for a long time. Eric Anthony, Alex Arias. Okay. So that pack didn't necessarily have any. Hall of Famers, unless I missed anybody. I'm looking up something real quick off, line, off camera. 
Um, there was another breaker that did, you can, um, you can get, yeah, House of Cards. Okay, you can send in your cards to players and have them sign stuff. And Hoss, Hoss of Cards, H-O-S-S -S of Cards, great channel. Um, he's done this a couple times. He's got a couple videos where he had sent older Junk Wax era cards into some of the um, players from that era, more common players, and had to have them sign cards for himself and his kids. Brett Butler was one in the last video he did. Brett Butler was super generous. He wrote individual notes to to his ki to Haas's kids, um, signed all the cards. It was just, I was impressed, super impressed with how generous Brett Butler was. John Olerud, probably one of the last guys to really threaten hitting 400 and is a solid, solid player. David Holst, Randy, Randy Johnson, the big unit. All right. Um, Alex Cole, Tom Gordon, Derek Lindquist, Kirk Gibson. I'm going to, he's not a Hall of Famer. I'm going to put him there. I don't think he's in the Hall of Fame. Darren Dalton, Bobby Bonilla, Bobby Bo, still getting paid to this day. He gets a million bucks a year, I think. What number? Till the 20, 2030 something. Um, that guy, best contract ever. Still some Hall of Famers I would love to see in here. Nolan Ryan's in here, Ryan Sandberg. There's, He's not a Hall of Famer, but Mark Grace is in here. I'd love to find him. Bob Welch, Ray Lankford, Juan Guzman, another wave of the future. One of the cool things this set did, maybe it's cool, they grouped when they numbered their cards. The cards are numbered or grouped by, uh, by their team. So let's say 15 to 20 are all Cubs. I don't know if that's accurate, but um, Manny Ramirez, that's a nice one. I'll set that there. Bo Jackson, that's definitely going in this pile. Luis Polonia, Billy Hatcher, Eric Karos, one of the great Dodgers, Ken Caminiti, and Jeff Conine. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. Um, so yeah, there's definitely players in here that I'd still like to see Robbie Alomar. Um, but I totally lost track of what I was thinking and what I was going to say. Rafael Palmero, a really solid player that's plagued by controversy because of the steroids. Edgar Martinez, he's a Hall of Famer. Ruben Sierra, another guy that had a really solid career for a while. Derek May. Kenny Lofton, another guy. Just a solid, solid career. Mike Hen Henneman. Ozzy Guillen, now a manager. I think he's managing right now. Doc Gooden. Greg Colbrin. Jim Gott. That's an, there's another really good um, documentary on Doc Gooden and Daryl Strawberry on ESPN. I haven't finished the whole um, The Last Dance yet. <laughs> I keep getting diverted by baseball documentaries, even though I loved those 90s Bulls. I grew up in Illinois, and so they were the, you know, you couldn't not follow the Bulls. Um, Lee Smith, great closer. Dave Stewart, another fantastic closer from his, I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick both, yeah, both those guys. Dean Palmer. Todd Hundley, Kevin Reimer, Felix Jose, Carlos Martinez, Tom Glavin, Hall of Famer, Lenny Dykstra. I don't know if he's he in jail still. Todd Hundley. I'm going to create a second stack here. Juan Gonzalez, Norm Charlton, Goose Gossage. Some of these cards are... Will Cordero, Greg Olson, Donnie Baseball, Don Mattingly. I'm going to 
to throw him in the pile. Shane Mack. Alex Cole, Barry Larkin, and another Derek May. I remember us Cubs fans had some high hopes for Derek May. He's another one. I mean, and that's the that's the thing with baseball and any of these guys is you may have the highest hopes for them, and for whatever reason, maybe they get injured or who knows, they just don't pan out you, the way you hope or the way you think. One of the reasons I, two of my favorite sets currently, or, you know, modern sets are still st our Stadium Club and Diamond Kings. If you've seen any of my more recent previous videos, you know Diamond Kings is one of my favorites. Uh, but Stadium Club's another one that I'm really looking forward to because these those sets include players from this era, these eras, and even before, back in the, you know, golden age or 50s, 40s, 50s of baseball. I just love sets that have a good mix of both. It's the nostalgia factor. I mean, they know that the people buying the cards are people my age that, you know, middle-aged guys that trying to think back to their youth and enjoy the things that they loved as, in, as children. I know that's part of my enjoyment of this. It takes me back to being a kid and going to card shows at the local cheap little hotel that had a little um, ballroom and they'd set up with tables and taken my little binder with cards, trying to sell cards to dealers and so I could buy more packs and from the junk wax era. So stuff that's not really worth much of anything anymore, but still that was the way it worked. I got to tell you, thinking back, it taught, taught me skills of of bartering and interacting with adults. Because, um, you know, me and my buddies would go with, you know, one of our moms would take us or dads would take us. And then we would go into the ballroom while our mom or dad sat in the lobby and Dennis Eckersley. All right, nice. And we would kind of haggle with the dealers. And, you know, and as a kid, that taught us, I think, quality, important skills of how to deal with other adults, how to deal with adults, which be respectful but also how to communicate with adults. It was great for teaching essential life skills in some ways, believe it or not. Russ Davis, Wave of the Future. I don't know who he is. Jimmy Key, Kent Herbeck, Pat Lestache. He was Rookie of the Year. Uh, same year as Eric Karros, I believe. Um, again, you know, was one of those Rookies of the Year that you thought was going to be the thing and then just didn't quite have the career that you thought. Rob Dibble. And here's one that I was looking for, Mark Grace. Fantastic. That's still... Love to get the Ryan Sandberg, and that would make this Cubs fan happy. Um, I know I could probably go on eBay and buy it for 50 cents, but would love to find it in this box. Uh, but yeah, going to those card shows brings with Chris and JP and Eric and Danny. Takes me back. Bernard Gilkey, Pat Borders, Jose Canseco. I will put him there. Another Barry Larkin. Second Barry Larkin, Chuck Finley, Mike Greenwell, Mark McLemore, McLemore. Here we got a Jeff Bagwell, nice. Brett Barbary again, Willie Blair. We're starting to see some dupes. Four packs left in my 35 minute video so far. If you've stuck with me, I appreciate it. Got a Big Mac. Told you about that Sammy Sosa Mark McGuire documentary on ESPN. It's a great one. That corner's kind of rough, but this is all for my PC. So, Bob Tewksbury, Devon White, another wave of the future. We've got Alan Watson from the Cardinals, Paul O'Neill. Pedro Munoz, B.J. Serhoff. See names like 
Alan Watson here, and it kind of makes you wonder who from the last, you know, the current crop of rookies is going to be in 25 years, be like, oh, who was that guy again? Vla Vladimir Guerrero, who? Hal Morris, Mike Morgan, Mark Lemke. That won't happen because his dad's already in the hall, but so the, Vlad Guerrero will be a, definitely a name you remember, but you get what I'm going for. Jason, D Jason Domingo, who? I'll throw that one, Jason Dominguez. Or he could just be the next Mike Trout. Jeff Montgomery, Kurt Manwaring. Okay. Gene Harris, Eric Karros, another. Travis Fryman. Joey Cora, Gary DeSarcina, Larry Walker, Tim Wallach, Doug Jones. All right, Rhino. Nolan Ryan, Ryan Sandberg. Let's go. All right, got another David Wells, John Wetland, Darren Lewis, another wave of the future, Brad Pennington from Baltimore, Albert Bell, he was another guy who, had, he and Cecil had years where they were just beasts, Ellis Burks, Jose Vizcaino, Dennis Martinez, Jody Reed. Well, all right. Don't think I'm going to get all of the classic players I thought I might get. Um, there's 300, I believe, cards in this set. I think I got 240 of them because 10 cards per pack, 24 packs. Getting close to the full set, but not quite there. That has got quite the scuff on it. Brent Gates, Geronimo Pena, Ed Sprague, Tom Glavin, another Tom Glavin, Chuck Knobloch, Graham Lloyd, another Rookie of the Year, I believe, Phil Hyatt, Greg Hibbard, Ron Gant, and finally, Mariano Duncan. Well, that was a fun little rip. Looking back, taking me back to my childhood. We got these cards here of Hall of Famers or just guys I really liked as a kid. Um, won't go through them all because the video is long enough as it is. Got these commons over here. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell for not other notifications. I promise most of my videos aren't this long. Um, Follow me on Instagram at Nate's Breaks and Unboxings. That's all one word. Would love to have you following me there. Um, yeah, leave, if you leave a comment down below. Would love to hear your thoughts. If you had a favorite card in here, or if just any other thoughts you might have about the junk wax era, I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right. So hope you're doing well. Take care. Be safe out there. Be healthy. Take care of yourselves. Be good to one another. Love one another. Care for one another. And we'll see you next time on Nate's Breaks and Unboxings. All right, folks. Take care.